Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and I've asked Iggy Tan to come back and update us on what is happening with their solid state sodium alumina batteries. This is fascinating, groundbreaking stuff. Uh, the last time I spoke to Iggy was in September last year, where we talked about this as an alternative to the lithium ion batteries. Well, now they're launching this, and it's looking like it's going to be going ahead, and there's very exciting news. Iggy, good to see you. You're the Managing Director of Alltech Chemicals. The ASX code is ATC. Welcome back to Small Caps. Good morning, uh, Kerry. In fact, we have now changed our name officially to Alltech Batteries Limited. So with the same ticker code, ATC, uh, oh. specifically because we are focusing on the battery sector. So our two projects is the Salumina Anno project, which is on the lithium ion battery side, where we're coating uh, silicon with alumina uh, to help uh, silicon being incorporated in lithium batteries. But on the other side, we also, as you mentioned, our uh, solid state uh, sodium chloride batteries. So we, we're here to talk about that. And we recently launched a one megawatt grid pack battery. Now, Kerry, one of the biggest problems in the grid storage area is that the extensive time it takes to install these batteries and also the complexity of the configuration and, and connection of these batteries. So if you can imagine, you know, putting together 20 batteries on site. Um, the way we solve that problem, Kerry, is that we have now installed all those batteries in a sea container and we can just ship that sea container to the site, drop it on the deck, and there is a plug and play feature. So virtually in three minutes, you can have a one megawatt battery pack sitting on your paddock ready to go. And so that's uh, that's the, the what we launched our design. Uh, essentially they are built in sea containers and they are actually stackable. So we can stack one a battery on top of each other, which reduces the battery footprint. So that's uh, also a very important feature. Uh, when you when you say that they're in sea containers, is that specifically for from a you know high low temperature? It, it, does that help protect the battery, or is it just a simpler form of transport? Why, why the sea container? Yeah, it's, it's essentially a open sea container, so it's a frame of a sea container, and so it it makes it easy for transport. So it sits on the back of a truck. Uh, you can just lift it on and drop it on the deck. Uh, plug and play and you're you're ready to go so that's the other uh, benefit the other benefit is that all our batteries are designed to operate in extreme weather conditions right they can operate right in very cold climates uh, down to minus 40 degrees and they can also operate in very desert conditions up to 60 degrees uh, and that's a big advantage over the lithium ion battery uh, batteries at the moment so the other thing that also people are interested in is that there's no moving parts on our battery. So in a lithium ion battery, there's always cooling fans to keep the battery cool. Uh, we don't have any of that because essentially it monitors and adjusts, regulates the temperature anyway. So for example, when you charge the battery, it takes heat away. And when you discharge the battery, it creates heat. So by by cycling that, it actually uh, regulates the temperature. So that's a big advantage uh, over lithium-ion batteries. It can operate in the very cold climates as well as the desert conditions. Uh, do lithium-ion batteries, uh, do, uh, are they not effective in uh, hot or cold? Well, they, they start to slow down. So at zero degrees, the, the capacity of the battery drops to about 70%. Uh, and also in very hot climates, you, you're actually having uh, air conditioning to cool the, the battery down. So it takes a lot of energy as well. So that's the big advantage of our batteries is that uh, essentially you can just drop it anywhere and it will operate uh, without any maintenance or um, uh, uh, requirements to look after the battery. One of the key things of this battery is, and I think you've mentioned this before, is that there are no critical minerals. So obviously lithium iron, what have you got? You've got cobalt, you've got copper, you've got lithium. And, and we know that the, the lithium market is there, but 
no critical minerals, does that mean that this could overtake the lithium uh, iron sector or is it an alternative? Yeah, I think it's a good alternative. So the lithium iron battery is a very good battery. It's been many, many decades of development. Um, but what this is provides is an alternative. So we use a sodium chloride, which is common table salt, <laughs> and also a nickel metal powder in our batteries. And it's solid state. And the reason it's solid state is that we don't have the flammable liquid electrolyte that a lithium iron battery has. And that flammable liquid electrolyte is the problem that causes fires and thermal runaway. Now, yeah. the lithium battery industry has been trying to get away from that using solid state. Now, what is solid state? It's essentially a ceramic piece, and it allows the lithium ions to go through it back and forth. And essentially, our technology is the same. We have a ceramic uh, tube and it allows the sodium ions to go back and forth. So there's no liquid electrolyte. So that's why it's called solid state technology. Uh, and because of that solid state technology, uh, you don't have the, the risk of uh, fires because you don't have that flammable solution. The other thing that's also good with solid state is there's no breakdown of the ions like sodium. So sodium will, will stay there uh, virtually forever. That's why uh, the life of our batteries is estimated to be nearly double a lithium battery. So instead of eight to 10 years, we're looking at about at least 15 years life of the battery. So longer life versus the lithium ion battery. What about uh, from a cost perspective for, for people looking at this? Uh, I guess with the fact that you don't have the critical minerals, does that bring the cost of this battery down uh, by way of comparison? Yeah, so the technology was developed by the Fraunhofer Battery Institute out of Germany. So we, we didn't develop the technology and uh, they wanted somebody to commercialize the technology. Uh, they've already spent nearly 35 million euros uh, in the research and development of that and they needed someone to take to commercialization. We had land in Germany and we were ideal partner because we have a lot of background in ceramics or the, the, the solid state part of the battery. And so that's why we form a joint venture where we own 75% of the project and they own 25% of the project. And they have estimated that it should be 40% cheaper to make this battery versus a lithium battery. Well, if you think about it, that sort of makes sense because we don't have any lithium, we don't have any cobalt, we don't have any uh, graphite, we don't have any copper, or manganese. So some of the uh, major critical uh, metals which are seeing price rises recently in lithium batteries, uh, we, we don't use in our batteries at all. So fundamentally, it makes sense that our battery should be cheaper than the lithium battery. Uh, Iggy, you, you, I'm just curious, why did you have land in Germany? <laughs> well, we were doing, as I said, the Salumina Anno project, which is that coding technology. So we already bought the land. And so we had the available land and we were present uh, in the German market as well. So that's that's why we uh, we were selected as the uh, successful joint venture partner. Okay, let's talk commercialization. Let's talk about how you take, because this is the design, the design is is great, the technology works. What are the next steps to get to commercialization? Well, we are working on a, a definitive feasibility study uh, using a lot of uh, German suppliers uh, and uh, a, a lot of automation. So we are producing some of these cells at about one a minute, uh, and some some 240 of these cells go into a, a 60 kilowatt battery pack, and then 18 of those go into a mega pack or, or, or a grid pack. So you're talking about a lot of automation and assembly uh, automation. So we're working with a lot of German suppliers, uh, and we are well underway with the, the completion of the DFS. Now, once we complete that, we, we then know what the capital requirements is for the plant, and then we will be looking for, for the funding of the plant. Of course, we are talking to uh, various German uh, banks uh, uh, at this stage, and so the plan is to then get funded uh, and build the first 100 megawatt per hour plant in Saxony, Germany. Now, Saxony, Germany is on the east part of Germany, very close to the, the border uh, of the Czech Republic. 
couple of questions. Uh, Iggy, when's the DFS going to be finished? Uh, we're looking at the, the back end of this year, uh, but uh, very exciting technology. Um, and um, I guess the first Australian company that is involved in actually uh, battery production. So uh, we're, very, we're very excited about uh, being the first company in that sector. Oh, absolutely. Um, Germany, great place to be. You know, innovation uh, in Germany is, you know, sometimes they're at the forefront. What about government support and what's it like dealing in Germany? I guess for people, we're talking about a, a company listed on the ASX, but really um, dealing in that sort of environment. Are you getting government support? Gov are they noticing what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. So there's a lot of interest, and uh, we will be looking at um, some major grants for the for the project. Uh, and there are a lot of grants at the moment because you know Germany probably one of the highest uh, renewable energy component in their uh, their system, uh, and um, they're looking really because of the problems with the Ukraine war and the the price rises of electricity. Uh, really looking at renewable energy. And the most important part of that is the energy storage. Uh, it doesn't make any sense if you build a solar plant yeah. uh, or a wind farm, uh, which generates a lot of electricity during the day or when the wind is blowing, uh, and then not be able to uh, sustain that to the grid uh, at nighttime. Uh, and that's where uh, battery storage has got to be the key to the renewable uh, energy sector. And this sector is... An area you should watch, Kerry. This is it's a bit like the uh, EV lithium battery EV industry about ten years ago. This is a very early stage sector, sector, but is growing at twenty eight percent. So uh, this is an area to actually look at uh, as the next uh, area of growth. So who is the end user? Who who do you, is it? Um... Is it governments with grid the, the need for energy? Because you know battery storage very important part of the mix. But who do you, who's your client? Who's who's the the consumer of this? Yeah. So our major customer would be a, a energy pro provider. Um, I mean, there is a lot of interest from uh, households because they want their batteries. You know, a battery at their house. But we we focus on the the uh, industrial side, the grid storage side of energy. And they are generally providers of electricity and uh, growing their, their renewable com components. So, for example, there's a, a, one of the big electricity supplies in the region uh, is looking at building uh, seven gigawatts of solar power or uh, wind power uh, uh, to supplement the uh, electricity generation. And with that, you need battery storage because it, you 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 need to uh, um, charge your batteries during the day when the sun's shining, and then discharge it during the night. Uh, and and no different to people at home that have solar panels at home, uh, they're also looking for for a battery that can actually uh, discharge at night. Because currently, if you're generating power during the day, you're putting into the grid at zero cents or four cents a kilowatt hour and at night you're buying it back at uh i don't know 29 or 32 cents a kilowatt hour it, it doesn't make sense and the only reason you haven't got battery storage at home is it's uh it's not economical today because of the cost of the battery so uh, cheaper batteries will actually bring that uh to the consumer is this the final bit of the puzzle when it comes because you just spoke about wind and solar and there's been a lot of talk about wind and solar, but you're right. Okay, when the wind blows and the sun shines, but what do you do when you actually do need it? So the storage part, has that always been the last bit of the puzzle? Yes, and what's been holding it back is capacity to build these batteries and the cost of these batteries. As you know, Tesla are building these mega packs. Uh, they're not only focusing on EVs, but they're also focusing on the industrial side. And, you know, the famous one is that, uh, you know, Tesla provided all these batteries for South Australia uh, to That's prevent right. the, uh, the blackouts. But what they are finding with that model is actually that is making a lot of money from arbitrage and grid stabilisation. So, for example, uh, when the price is low, they can charge their batteries and then discharge to the grid when the price is 
it's much higher. So Ooh. they're actually making uh, a, a lot of profits by just, uh, ar- they call it arbitrage. Wow, that's uh, that's that's a little bit sneaky, uh, because the the cost of energy across the board is going through the roof. Iggy, competition is anyone else doing what you're doing? Because it sounds simple. Uh, not, not on the ASX, obviously, but uh, you know everyone is. Um, yeah, so that we're looking at. Uh, I think the whole industry is looking for uh, a reliable grid storage. Uh, batteries and and much cheaper grid storage batteries and and um, and that's a very exciting sector can we take a step back and a step out if you like because i'd love you to give us a sort of a longer time frame i'm talking to you we're coming into april 23 i can't believe i'm saying that but there we are um give us the big picture of some time frames some key milestones that you think are important for all tech batteries Thank you. Yeah, well, so the the uh, some milestones we're looking at is obviously completing the DFS. Uh, we are talking to uh, various uh, off-takers, potential off-takers. So we want to be able to announce some partnerships on um, on the battery production for that first plant. We'll be talking about uh, the progress of that, uh, looking at funding, and then even looking at uh, first um clearing of the ground and starting the construction so that that is all part of the news flow that we're looking at and you know our, our philosophy is uh, uh, build the plant and uh, the, the value will come uh you just said build the plant how complex is it to build construct construct this plant uh it's it's a uh, it's highly automated, but there are a lot of suppliers that, that can prov- provide all that automation. So we've already uh, gone, uh, selected all our supplies for the, the plant, and uh, it's a very interesting automation that you'll you'll see when we get up and running. So uh, I'll, I'll invite you to Germany, Kerry, and you can have a look at some of that technology. That would be amazing. We should do an interview in Germany because o- is automation part of the key to keeping the cost down when it comes to this? Uh, it's it's just the fact that you're producing uh, these battery cells at high rate because you, you have, you know, one a minute virtually, you have to produce one a minute, assemble the whole battery in one minute. And so you need uh, robotics and automation to do it. It's just, uh, it's a, you know, that's how uh, auto, auto plants are made, auto makers, car factories, are all that kind of technology in Germany is, as you say, has all that experience and uh, technology. All right. It would so be, be hard for us to do it in Australia, that's for sure. Why is that? We, we just don't have the experience. I mean, we, we're good at mining and, and processing plants, but we don't have the, the uh, uh, robotics and automation that, that is required in this plant. Ah, shame on you, Australia. Keep up with Germany, please. Um, uh, Iggy, I'd love to, we're running out of time. I'd love to just wrap it up and, and, and you let our audience know why it's right, right now is a good time for people to sit up and take notice of Alltech batteries. Yeah, so very exciting new technology where we just use uh, common table salt and uh, nickel metal powder. It's solid state technology. These are the batteries are designed for the grid storage market, uh, a market that is growing uh, very quickly. Uh, the fact that we don't use uh, lithium, cobalt, copper, uh, uh, graphite, uh, it, it shows that we potentially can be a much cheaper battery going forward. Uh, and we are a good alternative to the lithium battery. We, we don't claim that it will replace the lithium battery, uh, but we, we will pr- want to provide a very good alternative. Well, certainly in these days where there are some challenges with those critical minerals, that's why they're called critical. Good old common table salt is going to be the next iteration of batteries going forward. Iggy, I love the way you're always innovating and always, I guess, pushing the envelope, but in this case, pushing that battery technology forward. I look forward to chatting to you again and uh, finding out as you progress through 2023. Thanks so much for joining me on Small Caps today. Thanks for having me, Kerry.